Hello everyone, uh, it's Dan from Ari Dan Sewing, uh, another vlog, vlog, whatever, um, it's about 3 a.m. right now in the Philippines and I am dead tired, I need to go to sleep because there's a lot of business to do tomorrow, but I just can't sleep, got too much going on. Watch the last vlog, and you know that we were moving. We moved. We moved the whole shop from here, where I am now. You recognize the, the background, the Hello Kitty. I may take this wallpaper, <laughs> take the whole wallpaper to the new shop. Anyway, right? So we moved the whole shop from here in Santa Rosa way to. Um, Another province, like another state, it's called uh, Rizal. Right now, this is Santa Rosa, Santa Rosa Laguna. The new shop is in uh, Montalban, Rizal, near San Isidoro, San Isidro, San Mateo. I don't know, those are bigger cities. But uh, Montalban, uh, where the space is a little bit more. I mean, actually, maybe it's not. It's about the same, about the same size. Just we were having problems with the landlord here. Um, tried to raise the rent, scam, whatever. Uh, so we had to move. We had to find a place quick. I mean, houses that we had personally been uh, looking at in that area uh, to move to to live. Because it's uh, a bit closer to the fabric, uh, the fabric city of Tai Tai. It's a bit closer than here, kind of. Uh, actually, it may be about the same distance away. Anyway, we had to move. We were looking for a place to live. Uh, it's also near some of uh, Ariane's family, so it's just better. Um, but uh, we found this place quickly, good price. And then when we got there and uh, the landlord came, saw the business, um, they too wanted to raise the price. And so we had to go to like a arbitration, like a local arbitration with the homeowners association of this area. Um, you may be thinking, why are homeowners in the uh, shop? Yes, we are so, we have a sewing facility in this um, residential, <laughs> residential area. But, you know, um, here, at least it's my experience that uh, the type of commercial enterprise that we are engaged in, is acceptable. It's easy to get your, your house uh, registered uh, for commercial zoning. Uh, it's just a matter of doing the paperwork and the fees and the licenses and whatever. Okay. Quick inspection, get the safety gear in order. And what we, the house the house we got is a, a bare like a bare bones. I'm talking like cinder blocks just open, no rooms, no accoutrement, just an open space that you can fill with sewing machines. Um, a safe number of sewing machines to uh, adequately accomplish and uh, fulfill our orders. So, we're, all, we're doing everything the right way. It's, it's not, I'm not like, I'm not like, Shifty, but so we moved to Montalban, uh, and then we had this immediately, like not immediately, but like after we spent thousands moving all the machines and all the papers and everything that it takes to run this business, we spent thousands moving it. The now the, the distance, you know, if you're from the U.S., is not very far. It's, 
about 70 or 80 kilometers. I don't know how many miles that is. I don't even care about miles anymore. Here with metric, metric baby, all kilometers and meters and centimeters, all right? All metric here, so I don't know. I don't know how many, uh, you see my dirty hat. This is uh, what happens, right, when you drive uh, tri a trike, tricycle, uh, 70 or 80 kilometers multiple times uh, in the moving in the scouting process, right? And you have to drive four hours each way um, through the uh, suburbs and then through the smoggy city and then up the dusty mountains uh, and around the rainy peaks right you're exposed at least here you know you drive a motorcycle you get dirty that's what happens right so i drive a motorcycle with a sidecar but it's you know it holds the fabric and if you don't know what it's like to drive a motorcycle whatever it's it's open you're exposed and you get dirty everything gets I mean, especially if you drive a far distance and you're not always driving on uh, the paved roads, right? So where we are is up in the mountain. We're on, like near the top of a mountain. Um, you know, it's away, away from things, but not too remote. And uh, anyway, so going up there, the road is crap. Getting up towards the top, the road is just off. It, it's like there was a, a war. <laughs> A small war zone. It's like grenades went off all at different points in the road. And then, so it's always it's, the weather up there is because it's like, is it near the sea? I don't think it's near the sea, but like if you look on the map at Montalban Rizal, Philippines, you'll see that it's like right next to a big piece of green. And you gotta zoom in real close to see the roads because it's like on the edge. It's on the edge of like I don't want to say civilization. I haven't really explored it yet, but I look forward to going into that green zone. Um, just seeing, just camping, hiking, and doing some mountain climbing or something. I look forward to that. I think it'll be fun. But um, so at the top of the mountain, there's weather, and uh, so these potholes make it really dangerous, uh, in, in my opinion, to drive that route. Uh, after it's raining because the potholes get filled up with water and like the road is covered you can't see unless you are from there you know those roads intimately I, I in my opinion you have a high likelihood of dying unless you go super slow and your bike is <laughs> in very good repair because you're gonna hit one of those and just go face first into it, and it's not good. Or and after the rain, after the water goes down, it's all mud, right? So this is you're going up a mountain. Think about it. Just think about it. You're going up a mountain on roads that might as well be dirt, mud roads on a bike, on a motorway. You hit a lick and and you're off. Anyway, so so. This is that's my hat. That's why the hat. I was uh, I was trying to hide the dirt by wearing it back, but I wear it as a badge of honor now, right? I drive this route a bunch. So we've moved. We had the problem with the landlord. Um, originally. The plan was to move the factory close to the fabric uh, city of Tai Tai or into Tai Tai. It didn't happen like that. We moved in <coughs> to Montalban and which I, what happened next I think is a big compliment but not planned. All of the seamstresses said well we want to go with the factory. We want to go with you guys. Uh, which, you know, 
touches the heart that they all wanted to stay with us. And, um, maybe I'm just bad at business. I said, okay, <laughs> let's make that happen. Uh, so, we, but we had already, you know, our choices for where to relocate were limited. And again, we, we got a bunch of sewing machines, industrial like type operations. It's not very big, it fits into a house. I think I explained this last time. It's too small for a warehouse, too small for a factory space, uh, but too big for a, a domicile. house, too big for a house where you can live, right? It's hard to find a medium, happy medium, you know, a commercial space. They expect you to make commercial money, but I don't, I don't know. So, we move to a house, it's just big enough for the sewing machines, but, um, you know, and I think what helped us with the homeowners association with the arbitration agreement was that, um, before, you know, so we got pre-approval, yeah, you can bring your sewing machines here, yeah, that's fine, uh, here's the rent, everything's cool, so before the homeowner came and saw the, you know, I'm a foreigner and that we have a bunch of machines and maybe not just one or whatever. Before whatever changed their mind, changed their mind. They said, cool, go, you're good. Uh, and then with the assumption that we were good, we talked to uh, the construction guy. What's the construction guy called? It's 3 a.m. You have to forgive me. We talked to a construction guy. <laughs> I can't think of the word at all. I, a builder? I don't know. Anyway, we talked to Bob the Builder and you know, so we started going over all these plans to do an addition to the place uh, for the seamstresses to live now, right? So originally the plan was that we would move the factory and then we would stay in the factory in some little corner, right? We just we would just have to find new sewer, new seamstresses. I mean, like, that was just a given. You know? and then they started saying, "Yes, I'll come, I'll come, I'll come." And so, cool. We don't have to find new seamstresses. Um, we still need to find new seamstresses. We need seamstresses to deal with all the jobs. But uh, I'll come, I'll come, I'll come, and. So, you know, of course it's not ideal to try to build, uh, even temporary. So the builder was like, yeah, I know it's rich space, but that's cool. Uh, as long as the homeowner says it's okay, we can make the temporary structure that, uh, for the seizure system for you. Uh, that will work. Um, made out of like wood or something. And uh, price was low. Price was good. Price is good. Uh, because I still not have to do this, I think. Price is good. Um, actually, honestly, the price is 10000 You know, based on the preliminary estimates. So they took a couple hours and went all around and making plans. And said, okay, so we can build this on the outside and we'll take out this wall. And even do two floor, two stories, and you can put the room in this room, and you'll have your space, your office, and your living, and da, da, da. You take up the whole lot. They made their plans. Pretty much, uh, they made them all in Tagalog, and I was just a bystander, <laughs> you know. Uh, now, admittedly, I don't know anything about construction, so it's not like the conversation that I would have been great helping, but God, like, you yeah, if you want to feel like you're a part of the process if you're going to be building something for you to live in and you're going to be spending all this money well I didn't know how much money it would be at the time um, but so they made all their plans got everything settled with their end and I'm the one I'm like well okay that sounds all great from the little bit of this hours long conversation uh, that I understood that all sounds great how much is it going to cost, motherfucker? How much is it going to cost? <laughs> what are we talking about here? Y'all making all these plans and 
taking up all the lot da 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 and do the storage and all that. Yeah, you know, they say, well, temporary, temporary, we guesstimate 10K. 10K. I'll leave that up to you to figure out what 10K in pesos is. Um, so I'm happy about that. Again, moving into a rented space is not ideal. What we want with the ultimate plan was to buy a house and then build ourselves to suit our needs with you know, concrete. Like everything's built with concrete here to build real structure, build up and build da, 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 da. So we get a real operation, real living quarters. You know, we're not wasting ten thousand. We don't waste ten K on some temporary stuff that, you know, we gotta tear down when we leave. That's not ideal. So the we're still looking for a place to live. I talked about last time the whole um, scam and housing loan situation is not really been an update. The problem is, and if you look at the map here or here, I don't know where I'm going to put the map. I'll put the map up. And um, if you look at the place, at the bottom of the blue line is where I am now. At the top of the blue line is where the office is. Uh, and in the middle of the blue line, in the city of Kazan City, somewhere in the middle, uh, is the uh, Peg, Peggy Big Office, the housing loan office, the main office where Arian has to do her job. And Arianne can't drive, even if she could drive, they don't have a car, they have a tricycle, um, and the uh, road is dangerous. <laughs> and the road is bad, and during the day, the traffic is atrocious. So I know on the map. It says, oh, this trip is an hour and 45 minutes, uh, but take into account that it is 3, 3 a.m. Actually, I took a picture of that map at like 1 a.m., right? So, 1 a.m., there's really not too many people on the road, just the big trucks and the late night jeeps. Um, so, you can drive mostly without traffic. At speed, if you have the capacity to go, you know, 45, 50, or 60. And so you can make it that uh, 70, 80 kilometers in a reasonable amount of time. And especially if you can take the highway, we, we can't take the highway with a trike. It's just not allowed. Um, the Skyway, you know, you go through the tolls or whatever. Um, but the back roads, again, when there's no traffic, the back roads are basically just as efficient. So, what was I saying? It's a long drive either way to the Peggy Big Office. And then when you get there, there's so many people, such a long wait. Any attempt to do uh, administrative, governmental, administrative activities is a once in one hundred, it's, it's an all-day thing. You can do one thing per day. That's that's my goal here in the Philippines. Is you can you can you can get one thing done per day. It's it sucks, but that's that's just seems to be uh, in my experience how it works. You can do one thing. You can go to Peggy Bay. You will spend all day getting there. The rest of the day waiting there, and then the end of the day getting back. And that's it. That's all you got. That's all you'll get done that day. Don't no work. You can't work because the work is at the office. You can't do any of that work. You can go to Peggy Big, sit there, do the documents, and hopefully you have everything you need. And if you don't have everything you need, you better hope you, you're damn close to having everything you need because they're going to send you away. And you're going to have to go, set through more traffic, go to another government office. If it's a lot of paperwork that you need, that's that's the one thing you're going to get done. And then you still have to go back to the original Peggy Big Office and wait. And that's going to take another day. So what was one day becomes two days. Gone. No work is getting done. No work is getting done. So Ariane can't do that because Ariane is an integral part of the business. She sews. 
And I love her for it. She sews better than anyone. Um, she works hard and she sews better. Uh, we can't spare her for more than a day. I can't do the business because I don't speak the language. So what we need is a assistant to do the business for us, but the assistant requires like certain different like certain authorizations everywhere she goes to do the business on our behalf. Now, sometimes she has it, sometimes but and so we've been having trouble with assistants quitting. Um, I don't know why. I, I don't know why. I don't know I don't even, I don't even know if I've talked about this before, but we've been through like four assistants that just they can't do it they, they quit after the first paycheck they get one paycheck now, I pay good we pay good right our assistant makes 12,000 a month um, plus the benefits right but for whatever reason and I the reason and that I I hate to admit or think this but I think uh, the reason is uh, that I <laughs> that I pick bad assistants now. Uh, the reason is right. So I am not a college graduate, right? I went to college a couple times for whatever life reasons. I've always had to drop out, right? Just didn't have the stick to it. Uh, the, the, the personal dramas in my life. Whatever it was, um, I go and I try and then fail. Didn't work. Dude, I'm not a college graduate, uh, but I I will say that I'm a pretty hard worker. Um, consistent, consistently, whatever the baseline, whatever the work uh, level is that I do, I do it consistently. So. Or if I love the job and I love the people I work for, you know, and I'm willing, I'll put in those extra hours. But I'll put in the extra hours every day, all day, no days off. But ain't. so I worked for one. I worked as a. I, and this may sound. Don't judge me. I worked as a Chinese food delivery driver for a Chinese uh, family. Their operation, little family operation, local Chinese food restaurant. I love those people. They were my good friends. I knew the family. They hung out. I went to holidays with them, right? I worked every day. I worked seven days a week. I worked 10 to 12 hours a day. Every day. I took no days off. Unless there was some sort of business, you know, I had to go do licensing or something like that, right? Every day. Pay was not great. I mean, the pay was. It was good, but it wasn't commensurate with the, the amount of work I put in. But consistent, consistency, right? So whatever I, whatever level you get from me, that's the level you're just gonna get that level. You know, same thing with uh, another job, which is a nurse aide, nighttime nurse aide, right? Like whatever level I gave, that's it. That's the level. Uh, that's how I work. So if you get if you get a hundred percent, you're gonna get a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the time. If you get eighty percent, you get eighty percent, a hundred percent of the time. Um, and maybe I just I'm not experienced in hiring, uh, and I probably shouldn't say that because when I came here, I applied as like an HR manager, like I know what the fuck I'm doing. Anyway, anyway, I don't know. So I thought, well, I'm like that, so maybe other people are. If they have the opportunity, the chance, maybe they'll be like that too, right? So or if I give someone good pay uh, and the work environment is for them, they will give me good output. And it doesn't take much more than that. The pay and the benefits should, as long as they equal the work and the output, it's fine, and I, and I pay good. Twelve thousand is a good, sal very good salary here for the people I was hiring, especially right. So, like I said, I am not a college graduate. So I did poorly. 
in high school. The only thing I have going for me is um, that is my ADD. <laughs> my ADD and my work ethic. So I figured other people who were like me, non-college graduates, maybe just graduated high school, um, if they had the opportunity to make good money, uh, that they would spark and their work ethic would come out and push them along through the difficulties of this job. And I was maybe biased in that direction, thinking that, you know, maybe it's, I thought it's better to give someone the opportunity um, who maybe didn't have the chance, who who would never get the chance to prove theirself like this. Give them the opportunity. But, unfortunately, as I real, I'm realizing, when you do that, when you get, when you think like that, right, uh, a lot of people don't have the opportunity to shine uh, because they're not fucking shiny. <laughs> right? Some people, you always hear about the people who Rockefellers or whatever, they get rich in one generation. Um, those people are bright lights. That, I like that saying. I want to try and use it again. Those people are shiny, right? You get you get around them and they glow. They have that magnetism. They have that work ethic. They push their endeavors along Steve Jobs style and force things to be successful no matter what uh, obstacles come against them, right? Uh, I'm not as say I'm like that, but god damn it, if I haven't quit this thing, it sucks, <laughs> it sucks sometimes, um, especially when you don't have any assistance, um, and so I thought I would give someone else that opportunity, Just cut, give that opportunity to someone, but um, I just don't have enough experience with I don't want to say higher class, but more educated or more accomplished people. I don't have that much experience with those type of people. Like the people I worked for, the Chinese people, again, I don't even know if they graduated high school. Or I went to, they definitely didn't go to college, but they were some hard working motherfuckers and their work ethic inspired me to be better. Right? I was inspired to be better. They didn't do anything special, they just went to work every day. They worked as long as I did. That's that, They never asked me to work more than they did. Anything they asked me to do, they were willing to do it first. Yeah, I loved it. It was my favorite place, my favorite thing to do. Just work with them. Because we were all working together. Um, the military is kind of like that sometimes. I like the military too. Um, you just... You just you know. Anyway, so I I'm not used to people <laughs> who are college grads and accomplished. And I just, I don't maybe I had some sort of ingrained lower class bias against them. But I think I'm just gonna have to put the requirement that you have to be a college grad or something else. Also, um, dates we've technically been working from home. And again, this is maybe just some ingrained, something in me, some bias, uh, some inferiority complex where I'm like, man, I can't, I can't ask somebody who went to college for four years, you know, to come to my house, <laughs> to come to my house and um, work, at, like, and it's bad. Okay, it's, I work from home, right? I work from, and it's not even supposed to be my home. This is just supposed to be an office, but it's better than my home was, so stay here. I work, I work, look, here's the office, Hello Kitty room for one, right? Hey, college grad, come to my Hello Kitty room, right, and work at the, that little workstation over there, which, that's new, the previous assistants didn't even have that, and then, there's my bed. Don't focus on that. Right, there's my bed, now. I keep international hours, I'm up, it's 3 a.m., I'm up right now according to the blog, I do emails and whatnot. So obviously I sleep late. One of the one of the duties of an assistant that worked with me is that, you know, when they come in at eight AM, uh, I'm asleep. 
I'm going to sleep. All they'll have is like a list I've left in front of the computer for them to do. Uh, and then hopefully with experience they get in the groove and they don't need that list so they just can take the initiative or whatever. But there's no way I could be like, okay, college grad, I know you're looking forward to going to some office where you can move up. And they can. People come here, they can move up. Of course they can move up. The same ambition I have, I, I would not ask anything of uh, someone else that I would not want for myself. And maybe that makes me bad at business. Again, that's bad at business, I think. I think I need to just, I don't know, put me first. I don't know. Anyway, so, it's not what's supposed to be the topic. I just, <laughs> I need an assistant, mother. I need an assistant, and I need one that's good. I need one that's not good, because this job is hard, right? The job I ask the assistants to do, especially I'm an American, I don't, we don't speak the same language. If you work for me, you're going to have a hard time, right? You're going to have to understand me and my, uh, my, my accent. Um, and then you're going to have to learn the, the workflow. And you just, assistants are hard, it's a hard job anyway. I've talked about this before, the idea of what the assistant does, but for whatever reason, Another assistant has quit, so it's very hard for us to go to Peggy Big to get the paperwork, to amend the paperwork or whatever, to deal with that whole scam situation or whatever it was, miscommunication, so we can get a new property to call our own. Anyway, so the move has taken much longer than we anticipated. Some things have been pushed back, some things we're just moving around. It's a juggling act. Honestly, uh, right now I'm here. And Ariane is there, and they are sewing, sewing their asses off, getting things done. If you haven't heard from me, uh, you will soon. Um, the main thing is, I just hate to give bad news. So some things are delayed. Some things are delayed. But um, if the, the, the only reason I haven't contacted you yet is uh, my philosophy on contact is. Um, no bad news without good news, right? I need mean, you need to know that everything is under control. Um, so, and everything is under control, just not everything is going as expected. And I want you to know, and I don't, and I, and I want when I talk to you, I want you to understand that everything uh, is now going as expected. I, I don't want to contact you. Um, and say I don't know. Does that make sense? That it, it doesn't make any sense for me to contact you and say, well, da da da. I don't know. That's not helpful to anyone. So I need to be helpful uh, when I contact you. That's the only reason I will have not uh, talked to you yet. If you are waiting on some response, but I will get to you very shortly. Um, spill the tea. I'll, talk, I'll tell you the tea, what the deal is. Uh, so, as far as jobs, you can expect to hear from me shortly. Uh, as far as the move, they've moved very far away and there's still hardships because now, uh, with adding on this new stuff to the rental house, um, the cost of the rent is front loaded. Whereas before we got a nice lower rent we expected to coast on that for a while, but now we can't because now we have to build quarters. Uh, so the cost is front loaded, and now boom, uh, money is gone. But it allows us to continue operations, so it's net, uh, it's not a, even a choice. We have to do it. Uh, but uh, uh, that presents a new problem because you know here I work from home basically. I can't work from home there. I can't. There's not enough space, even with the new quarters, uh, for us to live there. Here we had this place and another place. We had two uh, houses here. There's just the one, and it's not enough space for business and a family. And me and Arianne have a big family, so we need 
uh, somewhere of our own to live. I mean, if we own some property, we could build a place that was big enough for business and family. Unfortunately, we don't, and uh, that, I don't know when it's going to happen. So now we have to rent another place. We're going to be in the two-house game again. It's just hard to find a place, a house that has the utilities that we need. Because if I'm going to vlog and vlog and all of that all the time, I, like I want to, as well as teach English, um, I need to have a good internet. To get good internet here, I had to sign a three-year contract with PLDT. So wherever I go needs to be PLDT access accessible, so that I don't, so that we don't default on that contract. <laughs> default on that contract, because oh yeah, yeah, it's rough, man. It's not bad. It's just very different, right? It's very different. And you really got to be on your game. You really got to be. Now, I'm sure people that are not, you know, customers, uh, watch this, friends and family, I want you guys to know that uh, you know, even I encourage everyone to come here, even though you hear me complaining, is hearing all the hardships, that all of these could have been ameliorated or fixed or, or uh, uh, prevented with more information and planning while I was in the U.S. It's just that simple. I'm the first one to come here, uh, so I find out everything the hard way. But you don't have to, and I still encourage you to come. Just get with me. Let's make a plan, and let's get you here, and get you successful, and live in the dream. Because despite the hardships, we do okay. We do okay here. Uh, we do pretty good. We do better than I was doing in the U.S. Right? So, uh, you know, I was talking before about how I drive a trike, tricycle, or a motorbike with a sidecar. Uh, and this is a four hour drive, long way. One of the earlier times that I was driving up there to uh, Montel Band to the new house, the new facility. Um, it was late at night. I only drive late at night, like 2 a.m., 1, 2 a.m., to get the good, you know, one and a half, two hours speed or whatever. Even with the trike, you can't drive fast. Um, it's only got three wheels. It's only got three wheels. You can't drive fast. But one day I was, I was driving up there, it's like, 3 a.m. because I had gotten lost, right? I had gotten lost coming out of some city, trying to follow the back roads. 3 a.m. and I took a, just the bad luck of the draw, I took a wrong turn down a, like a real sharp street turn. And you know, the back of your mind, you're like, that, that seems like a one way, like that's an outbound street. But I had missed the inbound street, and it just so happened I didn't even turn down the street. I think all I did was I turned towards it and kind of stopped to look to compare with my phone, which had no service at the time, so the map wasn't up there. I was just trying to compare. And I turned down the street, stopped to look. And when you know it, cops coming up the street, coming up to exit. God damn it. Now, real quick, I was like, oh, let me get out of here. Now, on my trike, I had a 50 pound, a 50 kilo sack of grains. Now, if you followed us, or if you are Odesh, if your name is Odesh, uh, then you know why I had that 50 kilo sack. It's for a job. But God damn it, if they don't see a foreigner, Driving down the, uh, the and this street was going through like this residential neighborhood, but not like a not a good residential neighborhood, a squatter area, right? So this is a street going down into the squatter area where the police are coming out. Just one foreigner with a empty trike, except for one 50 kilo sack of grains. 
They pulled me over fast, man. They pulled me over. And they were like, okay, what you doing? What, 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 what the, where you going, yo? Where you going? You don't live here. You don't have nothing to do down there. American guy. And what is this? What is this? This is, well, what are you doing with this big old bag of raw grains? What are you doing? Is this contraband? Do you have contraband here? And I'm like, oh, man, oh, man. I was worried. I was scared, you know. I was scared, for real. I was like, uh, I was like, no, officer. I was, I got real, like, you know. Now, I, admittedly, I am traumatized from living in America where uh, it's very likely, <laughs> likely that if I am confronted by three officers in the middle of the night, under some suspicious circumstances, I'll die. Like, so I was afraid. I was very scared because I'm used to that. That could have been the end of my life if I was in the U.S. That was it. They either would beat me to death or shot me to death, and took my money and left. Right, and, and uh, civil af asset forfeiture, all my shit. Right, and I had some money in my wallet too. Right, you know. I, I don't remember why. It was just for safety. It was one of the earlier times, and I knew the road was bad. And it was the middle of the night, and I was going alone. It was just in case, you know. So I had a little bit of war, a little bit of you know, just in case money on me, plus this big bag of grains, which nobody drives around with a single bag of grain. It's not a farmer. Or it's some kind of grain business, bread business or something, right? Nobody goes into these, or no strangers go into the squatter neighborhoods at 3 in the morning for no reason. So, yeah, I was scared. I was scared and I was, I was just like, yes, uh, here's my license. Also, luckily, I have a license. And here's my license. Uh, here's the paperwork uh, for the bike. Uh, no, this is, that's, it's for a job. Right? It's for, it's for work, for work. Uh, I say, whatever it's for I'm not going to say on camera what it's for but for a job right uh, so anyway uh, what saved me was that I was able to name the street that I was going to because they didn't understand they don't know uh, Montalban they don't know East Eastwood right these were local cops for a city that's nowhere near that place. I was about halfway, uh, halfway there to uh, the new facility up the top of the mountain. And so they don't know the name of this small little place where we moved. But um, they for sure were like, oh, I mean, they they lingered. You know, I don't know what they wanted. I I don't know if there was some other way for me to fix the situation. I just played dumb. Was compliant. And uh, I like pulled out my phone. I was like, I'm going Montalban, Eastwood, uh, near San Isidro, Isidoro. I still don't know if it's Isidro or Isidoro. That might have helped me because that's a bigger town. But like that was all. And I pulled out my phone. I'm like, I'm, I'm, look, I'm trying to get here. And I showed them the street. Uh, I'm trying to get here. JP Resolve. Map says it's here, but. Maybe then, and then they like, oh, JP resolve, resolve, and resolve, resolve. They start talking, oh, resolve, resolve. Okay, resolve, resolve. Go this way, resolve. And then the one who spoke good, better English, he was like, yes, go straight. And then uh, at the street, take a right, and then uh, take a right or take a left. Once you get past the bridge, take a left. Da -da -da -da. So he explained it. And the other ones they talk and the best way to you know because the streets are confusing if you don't know this reminds me look up the philippine roads or highway system at least so i can kind of understand the, i'm looking at the map right now and the map is it reminds me of like uh dc you know dc's got the i-95 and then the i-290 you know how big cities are have highways that go in circles around them. Uh, that's what I think this highways kind of do. 
Right? So I just don't know the naming conventions, right? So if you know the naming conventions, it's easy to go from I-95 or I-70, I don't, I don't remember anymore the streets, the highways, but anyway, it's easy to go from one, connect to the other one, and when you know the naming convention, you know 295 is going on the outside, right, or the inside, whatever, one of them is going on the outside, one of them is going on the inside, it's a semicircle, and you're getting off at different points, and you know, also, it's, hard for me to read the signs. Anyway, so yeah, that's just one scary thing that happened I, when I was pulled over, you know, and I don't, I don't think I was in danger um, the way I would have been in the U.S., but, uh, you know, I mean, they were definitely suspicious, like, what the, where are you, what are you doing, what is, you need to answer for this, young. So, they were definitely uh, suspicious of me, but just, I did my best, <laughs> and it worked out fine. Once they realized I just was lost, um, and all my papers were in order. Um, so, yeah. So that's the that's what the move. This was just a quick vlog. Everything's okay. Just waiting. I'm here at the old location for a few more days until the last electricity bill comes, so I can pay that and then we can go. Truthfully, everything has cost so much money that it has been very rough. But, luckily, we've had uh, clients, consistent clients, we're doing our work, we're doing the work, we're shipping out orders still. Um, and actually, I'm happy to announce that the Boss Alliance has re-employed us after getting uh, their initial samples. They like them and have decided to continue using us for a larger order so that's good um, and honestly once we just get settled get our, our, our sticks in the sticks in the ground I really see things taking off like this I know in an earlier vlog I was like you know I don't want to take off like this I want to go like and again that consistency that's me right um, but you know, when I do that, uh, I don't want it down here. I want it more up here. We're going straight, so we still got a little ways to go up before we level off. But I fully see that happening, and I anticipate that. I'm looking forward to just being able to do consistently high quality work, no delays, no hus must fuss and stress about where we're gonna live and where we're gonna work and it's so right now it's just been a lot going on so maybe everything's been a little lax plus the secretary's and equipment so i just need to find a higher caliber caliber of uh assistant um, if you are in the u.s and you know me and you want to be my assistant it's possible quit it 12,000 it's not a lot for you <laughs> right now for the job I'm asking but you might have an easier time doing it uh, so if you are a younger member see and that's another thing I'm looking for like young energetic people but maybe I need somebody that's desperately hungry <laughs> right no I, if you are okay with computers you can understand me perfectly are able to do exactly what I say uh, and you're organized, neat and organized, that's really all this job calls for other than you know posting in social media. It calls for someone who is neat and very organized, uh, who is, uh, who can understand me, can do exactly what I say, that's two different things. You need to understand what I say and you need to be able to do it, regardless of your own thoughts and opinions. And then you need to, uh, I don't even want to say post to social media. I think it post to social media goes along with, uh, you need to be enthusiastic 
about forwarding the goals of this organization. And I know for certain that that is the hardest thing to hire for. So find someone who is invested in the job, in the, in the company as a whole, right? Who is ambitious. And that's what I think the problem is, you know. Now, I have always been semi-ambitious, uh, but just with a short attention span. I've been ambitious, but with a short attention span. So I've done a whole bunch of things, learned how to do them, and then stop. I think the other people who haven't accomplished much, or who don't have like a lot of paperwork accomplishments, don't have the ambition to get them. I, I have the ambition. I'm, I've, always, I've always been like, yeah, I want to do this, and then just go do it. And then I go do it, and then I see if I like it or I don't like it, and then I go do something else. Uh, but so I, that's different. That's just something I'm realizing is different uh, between me and other people who are in a similar place. And then don't take that as me talking down about myself. I'm very proud of my whole life and my accomplishments. Uh, I have done a lot of things very successfully. So, if you're like, oh, well, what is he doing? He's a dummy. No, no, not a dummy. Not a dummy. Just uh, think about it like this. If I was a very successful electrician, I could not be making your clothes right now. Does that make sense? Um, I could not be successfully making your clothes right now. So, we're all amalgamations. We're all collections of our, of our experiences and our actions. Um, we should all be proud of our lives. And I hope you are. If you're not, you should do whatever it takes to get proud. I do what I did and do what you want. Whatever it takes to do what you want, that's what you got to do. That, uh, that's uh, that's my philosophy. Whatever it takes to do what you want, that's what you have to do. And that's what I'm doing now. So, uh, if you want to be a secretary, if you're in the Philippines and you can understand this, you watch this or whatever, if you can suffer through 50-something minutes of me <laughs> talking, uh, and you think you would like to get paid to listen to me talk? Yeah, you get paid twelve thousand uh, per month. And then contact me because there's stuff to do. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I just want to say on a personal note. you know me, I love you, and if you don't know me, I love you too, and uh, I've always avoided talking about my daughter on camera, uh, because it, I was of the opinion that it would antagonize my ex, um, her mother. And I never wanted to antagonize her or her family uh, because I had always held up hope that then we could come to some amicable middle pass so in our uh, disagreements. There was some middle way, something, some way uh, to if not resolve our differences, at least some method to allow me to contact and see my daughter in my room, uh, just to be in her life in some way. Uh, and now, you may say, oh, well, you live in the Philippines, how can you expect to be in her life? Yes, I did. I, I moved to the Philippines after it became apparent that in, while I was in America, there was no hope of uh, resolution. I always, but I always have thought that time, you know, they say time heals all wounds. Um, I just, I, 
I hoped it would not take this much time to establish uh, just some reasonable method of communication. Um, it's just never, it's, it hasn't happened, I, it's not going to happen. Uh, now, actually my mother says that I should just call every day, all day, uh, and listen to the dial tone or get the, the Facebook beeps, the beep, 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 you know, when nobody answers. This person is not available. But coming from a similar situation, uh, parent-wise, uh, as my daughter is in now, uh, now it's different, it's not the same, uh, I didn't have contact, much contact with my father throughout my life. Um, at a couple points, you know, I met him and visited him about seven, twelve, whatever, with however many months or years in between contact. You know, maybe um, you get on a hot streak of phone calls and gifts, and then it goes, the trail goes cold or whatever. Um, now, my father wasn't a good man, he was abusive to my mother. He was not, I won't say he was, he, he was like verbally, mentally abusive, and very mean, um, mean spirited. Uh, and through whatever limited amount of contact with him I've had in my 32 years of life, I get that same impression. I feel the same way. Um, so it's not like I'm just hearsay, it's evidence based. I know that the man, even slightly, whatever small amount that I know him, it seems honored. And I, honestly, I probably have some of that in me too. I'm pretty uh, moody. But regardless, so we didn't, I didn't see him much. Uh, just different times as I aged. Um, the time healed the wounds between him and my mother and he was allowed to access, he was allowed access to us did he take full advantage? I don't know. I honestly, I don't know his financial, whatever, mental, living situation. I never knew. I just know that at different times, he took me to the museum or we went to his bookstore. Um, when I graduated high school, he took me on a cruise. Um, on that cruise, we didn't spend that much time together. I was slept in the same cabin, but... Uh, I mean, I, I don't remember. He, he'll have a better memory of the cruise than I will, but, you know, I don't, it wasn't a bad experience. It wasn't. You know, it's not very many bad experiences with him. It's just not very many experiences with him. Uh, now, I, I, as an adult, reasoning, thinking person, don't, I don't resent or hate or have any regrets about any of it. I don't care. It's facts of facts. Facts of life are facts of life. I just take them as they come. Uh, and the fact of life right now is that I don't have any access to communication with my little girl. Um, but. As I said before, I held out hope that over time, me and her mother would be able to establish some sort of uh, rapport, some sort of system. But the fact that I have moved away to the Philippines and married someone else, and coupled with the fact that, you know, yes, I have a business, a businessman, and the business is growing and it's successful, and it's good. Um, I don't have money yet. When I get money, I fully intend to use that money on her. Um, and even even the little money I have now, I, I, I was willing to 
give to her. Um, you know, the, uh, well, I'm not going to really explain this. The difference between the dollar and peso is 50. It's 50 to 1. It's 50 to 1, and the cost of living here is about the same. It's about 50 to 1, right? So, uh, this, the, the house, which we use as a factory, the rent is 2,500 pesos a month. If you do the math, that is about $50, right? The rent for my business is $50. The new rent. The old rent is not $50. This rent was not $50. That rent the new rent is, but now there's all these, you know, costs, you know, if you're a customer, if you're an onlooker, you're like, oh, well, why can't you, da, 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 da. yes, the rent is 50, but then you got to think about the electricity, right, I'm running a bunch of machines, electricity is through the goddamn roof, plus there's the uh, utilities, the other utilities, the water, um, so there's, you know, the running water, but then there's also the potable water, the drinkable water that we have to daily uh, and we also have to buy it for everyone who works at the factory so all the employees plus us plus the family right so there's a lot of costs so get get out of my pockets just listen to what I'm saying the little bit of money I do have I was willing to uh, send to her but that money would have just been nothing it would have been a Symbolic it would have been a symbolic gesture. Send somebody, you know, fifty dollars a month in America. It's, it means nothing. It means almost nothing to them. Um, it would have been solely symbolic, and I was willing to do that. Definitely, right? of course. Um, and all I wanted was contact. I just wanted to be able to talk to and see my baby um, and so I always never talked about this aspect of my life on camera or wherever uh, because I held out the faint hope that maybe maybe this needs another month maybe this needs another couple of weeks maybe soon maybe soon maybe soon I'll be able to talk to her and I'll start sending money and then everything will be like a normal you know, separate but two parent family. Um, I, I thought I would keep quiet. I wouldn't antagonize them. Let the let them cool down. Or, I, don't, I don't know. But so that didn't work. This doesn't work. Um, for whatever reason, she hates me, and her mother hates me, and her family hates me. Whatever they hate me. I just have accepted that they must hate me. Um, they think that I am not worthy uh, of seeing my daughter, and the only worth that I can um, attribute, the only uh, way I can understand that they're calculating that worth is through dollars. I was poor when she met me. I've been poor. We were poor together. Uh, we eventually started making some money together. Uh, we broke up. And then all of the money that I had, I gave to her. While it was still fresh, the wounds were fresh, the breakup was fresh. She hated me for whatever. Um, so I gave half. I gave literally 50% of every paycheck I went to went to her every two weeks. Half of the money I got was not an exaggeration. 100% of the Half. Uh, but then, just spitefulness, uh, greed, whatever it was, she stopped letting me see the baby. She started undermining my ability to provide that half, right? Just stealing, 
just causing trouble. So, uh, I lost. No, I didn't lose. Anyway, so, after a while, I gave up and I moved to the Philippines. When I moved to the Philippines, of course, I intended to come here and just set down my flag and work with the business that I already had going. Um, but that business turned out to be a lie. It was not a real business. Uh, so I came here and soon found that I had no money. And, uh, and I couldn't go back. I wasn't going back to the U.S. You know, that's just not me. I don't. Uh, I'm going to say I'm not a quitter, uh, but I'll quit things. <laughs> I'll quit things in a heartbeat. But not because of failure. I'm not a failure quitter. Right? I got ADD. I got a short attention span. Right? If I like it, I'm in. When I don't like it no more, I don't want to do it. I just quit. Uh, but I won't let uh, something else stop me. That's crazy. Right? So I made the decision. I came here. I'm not going to. I'm not. I'm not a loser. Right, I never will think of myself as a loser in any action that I take that will make me feel like a loser. I'm not going to do it. And if I tell everyone I'm going to the Philippines and I've got this business and I'm in love and I got a girl and, da, 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 and it's all set and I'm going to be successful over there and you should come there too, uh, I'm not going to go over there and be like, oh, I am a failure. I failed. I'm going to hang my head and go back. It doesn't, that's not how I work. So I didn't. And I'm making it work. And uh, business is going well. Business is going up. This is all personal drama. If you are a client or something and you don't want to hear about this, this is not about business anymore. It's just, just supposed to be just a message I just want to say for the first time on camera that Emory Lynn, I love you. I miss you. Uh, one day, one day you'll be old enough to make a decision the same as I was. Um, the same as I was, you'll be able, old enough to make a decision uh, to see me. Uh, the same thing happened to me and my brother as we grew older. Our father we got in contact. We were able to decide for ourselves if we wanted to see him or not. Um, and I just, you know, and, you know, these are on YouTube, so even one day she'll be able to just watch. And I just want her to know that I love her and um, I, uh, I miss her, I miss you, Emery Lane, and I am here. If you ever contact me, uh, I will pick up the phone or DM me on Instagram or whatever. Now, she's not old enough to do any of these things. She's still just a baby. But whenever that time comes and she wants to look back on the father she didn't get to see while she grew, uh, she can look at these videos and I just I want her to know that even from the very beginning, I have always loved her and wanted to be there and take care of her and do everything I could for her, uh, for you. So, that's it. I think I'm, I'm just going to add something like that to the end of every video. Um, just, just as a, you know, that's just a personal thing, just for me and for her for the future. Time caps of life. Time caps of touch stuff. Anyway, that's it for uh, me, Dan, with Already Dan Sewing.